the unknown, the possibility of being alone, or the possibility of not being alone, and the sheer massiveness of space are only a few of the factors that make it so unbelievably amazing and terrifying all at the same time. Space has no forgiveness, and every day we learn more about the harsh conditions and situations that exist outside our personal oasis that we call Earth. In this sci-fi, we bring you yet another element of the great outer space that will leave you fascinated and wanting more, as we list off five weird sounds from outer space explained. Number five, the plasma music traveling from Saturn to Enceladus. As some of you may remember, Cassini was a probe that was sent by NASA, the ESA, and the Italian Space Agency to Saturn to learn more about the planet and its system. Just two weeks before Cassini purposefully dove into Saturn's atmosphere to its death, it captured some fascinating information almost as a grand finale to its legacy. The information was in the form of plasma oscillations traveling back and forth between Saturn and its sixth largest moon, Enceladus. Plasma is a highly electrically conductive state of matter. It is similar to gas in that it has the ability to carry waves. An example of plasma that we all may be familiar with is the aurora borealis, or the northern lights. Besides being able to look beautiful, as I stated before, it has the ability to carry waves, and this is not limited to sound waves. But here's where things get a little complicated. If you were to travel in space between Saturn and Enceladus, you wouldn't hear anything at all, as the space is not able to carry waves. So how do we listen to it? Well, that's a fair question. Essentially, scientists took the information Cassini collected from the waves and converted them into playable sound waves here on Earth. The process is similar to how cars translate electromagnetic waves to sound so that you can listen to things on your radio. This process created 16 minutes of audible material all the way from Saturn. Of course, 16 minutes can be quite slow, so the scientists went a step further and sped the whole thing up so it could be played in just 28.5 seconds. Take a listen to a bit of that. Number four, Jupiter's bow shock. I'll begin here by explaining what a bow shock is, specifically when it comes to astrophysics. In simple terms, bow shocks are the boundaries that form between a magnetosphere and an ambient magnetized medium. An ambient magnetized medium would refer to the magnetized material surrounding what would be in this case, Jupiter. So with that information, let's break this down a little bit more. The bow shock is the boundary that forms between the magnetosphere of Jupiter and the plasma that surrounds it. Bow shocks occur when the magnetosphere of an astrophysical object, such as a planet, interacts with ambient flowing plasma, the same type of plasma we discussed in the previous segment. A common example of this is when solar winds encounter the magnetic field of Earth, as a solar wind is made of plasma. But Earth isn't the only planet in the system to have solar winds. In fact, all planets in the solar system are embedded in this interplanetary medium, which means all planets experience it. The wind travels generally at a speed of about 1 million miles per hour with respect to the slower planets. As these incredibly fast winds travel toward the planet, a bow shock forms around them, between them and the planet, similar to how a supersonic jet will form a sonic boom when in the lower part of Earth's atmosphere. Now to get to Jupiter. Jupiter has a very strong magnetic field that goes out more than 3.5 million miles or about 5.6 million kilometers, which means incoming solar wind has a very tough obstacle to overcome when traveling toward the planet. The bow shock forms where the winds and the magnetic force meet, with the purpose to slow down and reflect the winds. During this process, the energy of motion from the solar wind converts to thermal energy at the bow shock. This, in turn, heats the particles behind the shock, and particles then generate plasma waves. So what does this sound like? And how do we know? The famous Voyager spacecraft actually firsthand encountered this Jovian bow shock. When it did, there was a sudden burst of low-frequency emissions directly associated with the shock. Unsurprisingly, this is very similar to what we know about sonic booms, and are similar to the sound associated with them. Thankfully, scientists were able to record this sound. Take a listen.
Number three, a thunderstorm on Saturn. Besides its rings and the famous moon Titan, one of the key things Saturn is known for is its massive and incredible storms. These storms can be tens of thousands of kilometers long and can last decades. Even more incredible, scientists have been monitoring reoccurring storms that circle the entire planet. While fascinating, the planet isn't exactly making itself desirable to visitors, which is why we have machines that can visit it for us. In March of 2011, NASA's Cassini spacecraft made a visit nearby the stormy planet, just close enough to pick up the fascinating sound of one of its famous storms. The storm it picked up on is actually the largest and most powerful to be observed in such detail. When it was first spotted, it reached just 2,500 kilometers across, but a mere three weeks later, it grew to an impressive 17,000 kilometers. The tail of the storm even covered the entire circumference of the planet. Scientists were lucky enough to have Cassini record lightning strikes from the giant storm. However, the lightning from the storm was so fast, 10 strikes were hitting per second, which was too fast for the spacecraft to record. Fortunately, during a calmer part of the storm, the craft was able to record about a minute of audio condensed to 11 seconds. Be prepared, it sounds nothing like the thunderstorms we experienced firsthand on Earth. Number two, Voyager 1 crossing into interstellar space. In August 2012, NASA's Voyager 1 made history when it became the first craft ever to reach interstellar space. This also of course makes it the furthest distance a human-made object has ever traveled from Earth. To celebrate this incredible feat, NASA created and released a recording taken by the Voyager 1 of interstellar space. Scientists made the recording by converting the observations made by the spacecraft's plasma wave instruments into a graph and then converting that graph into audible form. As we've already learned from this video, vibrations in plasma translate to sound as plasma can actually carry sound waves. If you were to go to interstellar space yourself, you wouldn't hear any of this. Using the information from the density of the plasma, scientists were able to pin to the day when Voyager 1 officially crossed over into interstellar space. That day was August 25th, 2012. But what exactly is interstellar space? Interstellar space is the space after the point where the sun stops affecting its surroundings. This point is known as the heliopause, and it surrounds the space within this region that is affected, which is called the heliosphere. Once passing the heliopause, the particles become much less dense and also much colder. As well, there is a magnetic field that does not originate from the sun. This is what the Voyager 1 crossed into for the first time back in 2012. The graphed sounds span over the length of a few months and include the very moment the Voyager crossed into interstellar space. Take a listen. Number one, the sound of a black hole. This entry can get a little complicated as the most well-known fact about a black hole is that nothing can escape it. Not light and of course not sound either, right? Well, in short, yes. But just because nothing can escape it doesn't mean it doesn't affect its surroundings. Accretion disks are the structures surrounding a black hole that consists of diffused material in an orbital motion. Not all black holes have these disks, as not all are big enough to have things orbit around them, but those of stellar mass or supermassive black holes do feature these disks. These disks are incredibly powerful and also sometimes very unpredictable. Sometimes the inner portion of the disks just simply blow. This causes jets of high energy particles that blast out on either side. From there, the jets excite sound waves which can then crash into gas and transfer their energy as heat. This creates X-rays, and these X-rays have been detected by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. So the answer then becomes yes, black holes can make noise, but not all do. But the complications don't end there. For those who know anything about audio, this may be a familiar concept, but for those who may not, I'll try my best to make this as simple as possible. Sound waves travel in just that, waves. The distance between the waves determines the pitch, meaning how high or low the sound will be. The further apart the waves are, the lower the pitch will be, and vice versa. 
problem with the sound of the black holes is that these waves are apparently 10 million years apart each. The observed black hole in question would be in the key of B-flat, but 57 octaves below middle C, which according to scientists would put the tone a million billion times deeper than what the human ear could hear. Luckily for us though, another scientist decided to hear the black hole a different way. Edward Morgan of MIT took the x-ray data from a black hole and simply translated the information into audio. The following recording is the sound of jets escaping the accretion disk of a black hole. Enjoy. Thanks for checking out this Sci-5. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for the channel. Also, check out my last video, Five Mysterious NASA Livestream Cutouts, and be sure to stay tuned for future sci-fis on all things science and science fiction. Again, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters, specifically my new ones, Michael Badendistil and Glenn Hargis. Thank you.